How does a patient prepare uh, for deep brain stimulation? Well, it's a, it's a, that really is a team approach. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's usually done at academic centers that have a neurosurgeon uh, trained in deep brain stimulation, a movement disorder specialist, often nurse, uh, sometimes working with physical therapy. And so you want to make sure that the, the person is the, is the right patient and that they have the right expectations. And I think if you're with a movement disorder specialist who's walked you through and has seen you mm -hmm. through many of these medications and can explain to you what this can do, what the risks are, uh, what the trade-off is, that um, each patient has to come to their own determination that it's, it's the right thing for them. Uh, it is an elective procedure. Mm -hmm. It's not a life or death, death procedure. It's really a quality of life procedure. And so uh, every patient has their own story of what got them there and their own sort of story of, you know, now I'm ready for this or not. What are some of the complications that a patient should keep in mind? With so CBS? the risks of the surgery in an experience center are low, but they're certainly not zero mm -hmm. percent. Mm -hmm. So your risk as a patient might depend on a variety of factors, your age, your other medical conditions. Um, and so on a case-by-case -case basis, you know, you want to find out what the risk is for, for you, not just generally. But generally, this, there's a significant adverse event rate, meaning something really bad happening to you, on the order of 1% to 2% in most experienced centers, sometimes less. But um, you have to weigh that against what, is the, what are the adverse events that I'm experiencing on a daily basis because my medicine is, say, only working 50% of the day, perhaps. Mm -hmm. So that's really kind of what we try to weigh out with our patients. You know, when does that risk-benefit analysis make sense mm -hmm. uh, in terms of your decision? Can patients um, see their medications decrease with DBS? Often, yes, but not invariably. Mm -hmm. It depends on the symptoms. Uh, it depends on a, a variety of factors. You know, we, we talk about dopamine being important for movement, but it's also involved with mood. And so sometimes you really need a combination, um, but there definitely are cases where the medicines can be significantly mm -hmm. reduced or at least simplified. And, you know, with advanced Parkinson's, patients can be taking sometimes a very mm -hmm. complicated regimen. Sure. So that can be one of the advantages um, of, this, of the procedure. 